Hey guys, what's going on? And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do texture just like this. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so the first method I'm going to show you is the super um, simple and fast way of doing texture. So all you're going to do is take your raw clip and you're going to add texture pro onto it and you want to see how many frames that it moves by so for this we see that's two 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 so this is two it's a consistent two now we want to make sure that once we get down to this part that it's still moving at two because sometimes the enemies will change the frame rate depending on how fast they want the scene to go so for this it was two so what you're going to do is you're going to take enter your the frame rate of your composition and for me it is this i'm just going to copy it here paste it here and then do the divided by two because that's how fast it's moving and now you can see that the clip is already moving whoops your clip is already moving every frame instead of doing it the other slow methods uh, that you guys probably already know of and then for me i just add contrast such edge enhance motion way to blend and i use inverse with smart blend and then after I get this, all I'm gonna do, pre-compose it, I always call the first clip one, and then this is when you can time remap it. I never mess with the speed so that the clip is always as long as I can have it, and I can just fix it here, however long I want. So say the clip only lasts to here, I just drag the keyframes out to there, so that it's using up as much of the clip as possible. Or say it's so big, I can move it in. So all I'm gonna do is Twixter, use the graph, now, for this, when he does this part, it's going to warp. So I recommend if you have two beat drops close to each other to put a keyframe here. And then you can use this graph right here um, that I have. Uh, so this is what your graph would look like. And then, the, and then the clip would look like this. And I would say that's pretty clean. Of course, you are going to see warping at just this one frame, but you're going to have transitions over it, so you really won't see it at all. So that's um, the first step. Now, this step can sometimes have warping on some of the parts. So I can show you guys another method if you guys want to reduce the warping even more. So right now, I'll show you that method. All right, guys, so this is the other method that I use for twixtering. All I'm going to do is cut at each time the frame moves. And then once you've done that to all your clips, you're just gonna click on the bottom one first, and then click on the top one. You're going to drag to the left so that they're all one frame long, and then click on the clip, and do keyframe assistant sequence layers, and press okay, and it's gonna put them all next to each other, just like that. And then what you're gonna do is right click, pre-compose, name it whatever you want. I'm gonna call this one two, so I don't get them mixed up. And you already have your frames just like that, nice and clean, and then what you're gonna do is add Twixter Pro and for this one you do not mess with the frame rate because the reason why you mess with the frame rate is so that the it's moving each frame but for this it's already moving each frame since we cut it so now once you add the Twixter and add your settings onto it pre-compose it again and now you can time remap it and then of course I would still skip to this part where it's like that and boom and this is what it will look like now, of course, for this clip, there wasn't really much warping to begin with, so you can't really see the difference, but um, this is just another method that you can use. All right, guys, so with some shakes and scales on your clip, you can expect it to look something like this. And for this video, make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below any other tutorial ideas that you have. And yeah, so that about wraps it up. Peace out.